my name is Michael R. Hayes, and I'll be interviewing Dick Hayworth. Dick was born on November 18th, 1920, and he presently lives at 16 Linda Lane in Columbia City, Indiana. He was born in Noblesville, Indiana, and uh, he served in the Air Corps during the war. Uh, Dick, uh, tell me about the beginning of your of your time in the service. Well, Mike, I um, I just uh, graduated from Purdue and uh, took a job with Swift and Company in Chicago. Uh, my background uh, is that my father was a uh, uh, serviceman during World War One. Uh, though he was a Quaker, he chose to serve where the Quakers uh, uh, basically opposed the war. But I felt that I wanted to enlist since he had. And so I, uh, I investigated uh, both the Navy and the Air Force, but I decided that I'd rather, if I was going to be flying in an airplane, I wanted to land on land and not on um, water uh, if I missed the, air, the aircraft carrier. So I chose the Air Corps and um, I enlisted in August while I was working at Swift & Company in Chicago. But I wasn't uh, actually called up until uh, the end of January of uh, 43. That uh, started my uh, career and they shipped me from Chicago down to um, uh, Miami Beach, Florida, right on the, the coast. And so I was living in a hotel, so that was uh, uh, not too bad a life. I had uh, been in uh, ROTC in, um, at Purdue, so I already was pretty much broken in uh, for, as a foot soldier, but uh, uh, they still put me through uh, the regular routine as though I never uh, marched once in my life. And uh, so we trained on the... Um, uh, golf courses in uh, Miami Beach and uh, after that uh, they shipped me to Indianapolis uh, 25 miles from home and I lived in Butler Fieldhouse uh, and triple decks up in the balcony of uh, Butler Fieldhouse and uh, uh, the Navy had been in there ahead of us but uh, they changed over to uh, training uh, uh, what we were called then was aviation students and uh, we uh, were put through some college courses as well as some aircraft and um, ship identification uh, classes uh, where they flashed uh, silhouettes on the screen and you had to identify the uh, uh, ship or uh, plane. And uh, after that they sent me to San, San Antonio, Texas. I had originally gotten orders uh, to go to Miami Beach and they got me down there and then found out that they didn't have any record on me. And so uh, while I was there and while they were trying to find my records, I received a notice that I was due in San Antonio uh, for my uh, cadet training. So I was AWOL technically, I guess, for a while, but they got that straightened out. So I did finally end up in San Antonio and was uh, um, there for in a, uh, what we called a cadet center where they were uh, trying to determine whether we were best suited to be a pilot, navigator, or a bombardier. And uh, we had to take a lot of different tests, and uh, I ended up being chosen uh, to do pilot training. Uh, some of the fellows who uh, were uh, uh, washed out, as they called it, uh, ended up either as uh, gunners or uh, and were shipped off to gunnery school or to radio school. Um, and even as we progressed in our training, if anyone washed out, why that's about where they ended up. And so uh, I was uh, stationed there uh, at uh, San Antonio until that was complete. Then they shipped me to Fort Stockton, Texas, which is out in the uh, southwest part of the state. And uh, we flew what we call uh, primary training, or learn to fly in primary training. Though I had had 10 hours of uh, training in a Cub back at Indianapolis, they did give us that much training, but they wouldn't let us uh, uh, solo there. But uh, uh, I completed the um, 
training at, San, at uh, Fort Stockton and then was shipped to San Angelo uh, where um, we received uh, more advanced training and received our first uh, chance to do uh, uh, different uh, acrobats uh, with uh, single engine planes. I chose twin engine uh, so that when I completed that training I was sent to uh, Pampa, Texas where we received uh, 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 two-engine two uh, flight training. And then when I completed and received my wings there, then I was shipped to uh, Big Spring, Texas and uh, flew uh, bombardier cadets as they learned how to be bombardiers. And we flew them out over targets that were um, in the area and uh, then they were also trained to do some navigation in case the uh, navigator uh, would be injured uh, in, on a bomber and couldn't uh, complete the uh, flight why they could step in and, and help with that. We called them bombigators. I don't know whether that was a, an official name but then that was how we called them. Uh, it was interesting training. Uh, in the last month that I was uh, at Fort at uh, Big Spring before the war was over, um, we had 15 fellows lost. Uh, the only month that I can remember that we had any casualties at all. But uh, we had two flights of five. Uh, we flew a twin-engine Beechcraft that carried five men. Uh, pilot, uh, the instructor of the bombardier cadets, and three cadets, and. Uh, the um, two of those planes ran together uh, in a bomb bombing training uh, at um, 13,000 feet, which was our uh, top height we flew. And uh, of course, all of them were lost. Uh, we had two fellows that checked out a, a single engine uh, uh, trainer uh, that was put on our base near the end of the war with the idea that fellows who wanted to get their single engine license before they left the service would be able to do that. And, these, and these pl this plane was uh, redlined uh, against uh, being used for acrobats. These two fellows thought that they could uh, do that anyway and they lost a wing and, and uh, you, you don't get out of a plane that's lost a wing. You just uh, the center centrifugal force uh, freezes you in the seat and uh, they were lost. And then we had a, a relatively new pilot uh, assigned to our base uh, that had um, uh, a night flight uh, with uh, I think with four in, four cadets because they were more advanced in their training were out on a solo flight uh, so to speak. And um, the uh, pilot uh, switched to an auxiliary tank to land and that's a no-no how -no. uh, you go to a main tank and uh, his tank was empty and so he uh, uh, attempted to land uh, but uh, didn't make it and all but uh, one student uh, was killed in that so that was uh, a rough month but I was glad to get out of the service the planes were getting old and, and worn out and that was part of the problem So that, uh, that pretty much uh, in, uh, covered the uh, time that I went through training uh, and uh, my uh, uh, regular experience as a uh, commissioned pilot, about 15 months before the war was over. Okay, that was October of 45. Right, I, uh, I got out in early October. Um, I had some, uh, I had one uh, rather, uh, Heroin experience. Uh, we had uh, taken off with uh, four students for a navigation flight, and uh, we had full tanks of fuel. And as as I uh, lifted the plane off of the uh, runway, I felt uh, the uh, pedal go clear to the floor. Uh, the idea was that when you uh, took off, you would break your wheels from spinning and then they were uh, lifted into the nacelle of the plane. And this uh, pedal went clear to the floor, which it wasn't supposed to do. Well, I looked up and there was my wheel running down the runway ahead of me. And uh, so I had to fly around for about two hours to burn off the auxiliary tanks because they're in the rear 
of the uh, uh, of the wings, and uh, to avoid a, a greater chance for explosion, why when we would land uh, there would be a drag on the runway, and could cause an explosion. So we had to burn that off and then land. And it's a weird feeling when you come in and you uh, level off, and those propellers. Uh, get a little crick on, uh, on the end of them uh, uh, where they hit the runway before you land and that's a kind of a weird uh, experience but I didn't uh, have any trouble in fact I, I, got, I was more nervous after I got out of the plane than I was while I was flying and I was too busy worrying about flying it but uh, it was pretty much a routine um, experience of flying these cadets uh, and uh, hoping that they could uh, make it through, but sometimes uh, they would, uh, uh, the bubble in the uh, bomb site, we were using the Norden bomb site that was used during World War II, and in fact uh, they trained uh, we pilots enough that we knew what the student was doing uh, uh, so that uh, we could understand their uh, problems of trying to learn to use them. But, um, uh, every once in a while they, they would tilt them, as we call it, it's about like a, a pinball machine, uh, a pinball machine would uh, tilt and it wouldn't function right. Well, these sites, if the bubble, uh, uh, the level that uh, the bomb site had to have before you dropped the bomb was off, why then you had to cancel that run and, and go around and start again. And, and it was uh, sometimes a real experience trying to get back in that uh, uh, circle or that triangle. It, we actually flew a triangle of three uh, bomb sites and uh, to get back into the uh, line with all the other planes that were flying at the same time could sometimes be quite a task because you were, you were out of sync with everybody else then. But that, uh, that was uh, some of the main things that we experienced. Okay, after uh, your discharge, uh, where did you go? Well, I didn't know what I was going to do for sure. I had my degree at Purdue, but uh, I thought, well, with the GI Bill, I would take advantage of that. So I went back to Purdue, took some graduate courses, and while I was there, I ran across one of my classmates uh, that, was, uh, that had <clears throat> dropped out at the end of his junior year because his uh, father was ill and couldn't take care of the farm and so he stayed home and uh, ran the farm and he didn't uh, end up uh, in the service and he was back at Purdue at the time I went back uh, for my graduate work and he told me about having uh, worked out of the extension office, uh, county extension office in his county and working with 4-H and uh, with farmers and that sounded interesting to me because my degree was in agriculture and so I uh, went over to the office of the uh, director and uh, asked if there were any jobs available and they had one that I could uh, have in Whitley County which I ended up in uh, twice. So I um, uh, transferred, I dropped one class that I really just took as a listener course a repeat of one I'd had earlier and, uh, and enrolled in one that talked about or we learned about uh, the extension service. So I took that class and then uh, they assigned me, well they gave me two choices one was Plymouth and the other one was Whitley County and uh, I, uh, I felt like that uh, the agriculture here better suited my background so I chose Whitley County. And I've never regretted that at all. So that was in 1946 that I, in February, that I started in uh, uh, here at uh, Whitley County and worked uh, as the assistant county agent with B.V. Whitney, who was county agent. Good, uh, good man. He was a good trainer. Okay. I thank you very much. Enjoy it.